Knowledge is power in Apex, and being able to shoot is great, but you know what? We all can't do that, so if you are really looking to outsmart and outplay your opponents, you need to know how to play against them. Here's one secret tip to counter every legend in Apex Legends. Starting with the legend that I probably get the most comments on how to counter is going to be the Trickster himself, Mirage. One of the most frustrating legends to counter for new players is one of the easiest for more experienced players, and this is usually how Mirage goes. What it really takes to completely understand Mirage is to understand his little micro movements, but even if you don't know what to look for, there's still an easy way to counter every single Mirage out there. Waiting for the right moment and not panicking is the best way to counter Mirage. It's tempting to shoot every single decoy and panic shot in close range fights to hopefully hit the real Mirage, but the longer you can wait before firing, the better off you are going to be. Wasting ammo and shooting decoys will trigger any Mirage to engage you, and this is really not how you want to do it. Fighting Mirage is all about having the real Mirage take the first step so you can then return fire. Obviously, understanding Mirage's movements is the definitive way to counter him, but until then, just wait for the enemy Mirage to make the first step and don't panic. Next up is Mad Maggie, and comparably to a lot of legends, there's really not a ton to know about her. The biggest thing for countering Mad Maggie is to identify as early as possible that she is around. Mad Maggie's drill is the ability that can change the tides of battles, so sticking behind natural cover is the best way to go. Mad Maggie's drill has a more difficult time breaching through any natural cover, like a rock or a tree, as the way the drill is coded can sometimes just fail to cut through these objects. Larger cover objects and fragmented or clustered up rocks are also great, so the drill can't get to you. Anything really small and very simple like a wall isn't really going to be that great, so try to stick around more natural formations, and again, just be very aware that a Mad Maggie is around when you are fighting her. Ash is actually a very interesting legend when it does come to counters because for the most part, Ash's abilities are semi-instant, meaning as soon as you use them, they activate and there's really not a whole lot to counter. The biggest way to counter any Ash Though, will be at her most vulnerable state, and this is when she is using her ultimate phase breach. The phase breach is pretty loud, so it's clear when she is using it, and really you want to divert all attention to the exit of that phase breach. Good reaction timing is critical, and if you can, stand off to the side or even behind the exit of that phase breach, so Ash or any other players exiting the breach need to turn around to get shots on you. Just be very alert when there is an Ash round, and try to be very prepared and focus all of your attention to the exit of that phase breach. Unlike Ash and Mad Maggie, though, probably one of the hardest legends to counter is going to be Seer. Seer pretty much can always tell where you are due to his passive heartbeat sensor, but the biggest move you will want to counter is going to be the tactical scan. The scan is pretty detrimental to yourself, but frankly, as long as you are alert, you can simply run out of the scan, at least most of the time. And also, be prepared for the scan to come in. If you know there is a Seer around, you know he's probably going to scan you. You can bait him by starting to do a revive, hopping off early, and then hopping right back on as soon as that scan hits you, so you can't get that revive off and you're not getting canceled mid-revive. Similarly, if you are going to get hit by a scan when you are healing, stop the heal and start using it right away right after you do get hit by the scan. This is something that you can do to quickly get yourself back into the action and really kind of minimize Seer's effectiveness against you. Seer is a tough one to counter and a bonus tip for you, if you didn't know, you can crouch in his ultimate to not be revealed by the scan unless you do fire or you start to walk around. Valkyrie is a legend that you will need to counter multiple times in a match just because of her very high pick rate and popularity as of the posting of this video. Valkyrie's weakest moment is going to be when she is flying, but there's also a common mistake mistake players will make when you do try to engage her as she is flying. This is more or less wasting shots on a Valkyrie who is activating and spamming her jets while evading your fire. Wasting rounds during this means she is probably going to get away and when she does become less mobile, you won't actually be able to fire because your ammo is going to be low or you are going to already be reloading. It's okay to fire some shots at that Valkyrie, but you definitely don't want to waste entire magazines as she is getting away. Fighting Valkyrie is all about applying a little bit of pressure and forcing her to use that fuel so she can't keep flying away and then when you are able to actually catch up to her or she has has no fuel left, you then can unload on her and get her down. Of course, if a Valkyrie is high flying, meaning getting pretty far off the ground and just holding her booster, then go ahead and engage her as this is a pretty big mistake some newer Valks will make. Another legend who is difficult to counter is Old Fusey. Positioning is the biggest way to counter Fuse, and this is going to become increasingly difficult to acquire as you get further and further into a game, simply just because of how games are going to play out, especially in ranked with multiple teams in a smaller area. The biggest thing to counter Fuse is to have enough action space to maneuver around without getting constantly tagged by his knuckle cluster, which can be mildly to extremely infuriating. High ground and being above Fuse will be the way to go as it's going to make it more difficult for Fuse to get his cluster into your areas, and this is another way you can counter him. Additionally, being indoors will also be a greater threat as it constricts your movement and being on top of buildings or cliffs is the way to play. And as a bonus tip, if you aren't aware, you can pretty much walk right out of Fuse's ultimate right as it is initially getting placed. You'll only take a minor tick of damage 
damage without getting the full damage and burn effect if you are quick about moving out of that ring. Horizon is again one of the legends who is pretty difficult to counter depending on the situation. A Horizon that is floating up her lift at times can be very difficult to track and get shots on depending on your location in relation to her. If it is at any decent range or if she's floating pretty much directly up and around you or above you, it's going to be very difficult to just track her with your weapon. Horizon is most vulnerable when she's exiting the lift and hitting the ground. Save shots and rounds for when Horizon is out of her tactical lift and you know her lift is on cooldown. Some Horizons also will not move around to evade shots while going up her lift and if this is the case, you can engage a little bit earlier but in general and much like Valk, don't waste shots early and save them for when you know she is at her weakest point with no escape. Showing a little patience in Apex can go a long ways and this is something that you should keep in mind for pretty much every engagement to have better success. Moving us on, we are going to have Rampart. Rampart's barriers were more recently buffed to the point where they do take more damage to destroy them while they are activating. That being said, this is still the best time and the best way to counter Rampart. Destroying the barriers as it activates will be the best way to keep Rampart very vulnerable. Additional to this is trying to use movement and positioning to keep Rampart's walls out of play, but at the end of it all, just shoot the activating barrier and play it slow. A bonus tip is to also not peek a Rampart when she is fully spinned up in her shield. If you are at anything like mid-range, you're gonna get decimated, so I would absolutely recommend you to close the gap if you are fighting a Rampart with Sheila out, or just wait for her to waste all that ammo. There's really not a whole lot for the Loot Queen Loba. Countering a Loba is all about picking her off at the weakest moment, like a lot of other legends, which is gonna be when she is teleporting. Once the bracelet goes, there's really no stopping it. Chasing this teleportation bracelet is the way to go, and be prepared to put shots down on Loba when she comes out of the teleportation. Another quick tip to counter Loba will be to keep an eye on the ground loop. If it's floating, it's a dead giveaway that not only a Loba is nearby, that a Loba or another player is actively in the black market. Next up is the assassin himself, Revenant. Revenant's a flanker legend at heart, and between his passive climbing and the tactical silence, he's gonna wanna lock you up and prevent you from getting away via your movement abilities. The best way to stop this from happening is to stay on high ground, as the silence orb is gonna be a little bit harder to connect to you from any player that is under you. Additionally, being self-aware of any non-regular flank spots is going to be key. Understanding that an unclimbable or higher roof is attainable to that Revenant can go a long way to stopping him from getting the drop on you. As always, you got to be very aware of your surroundings, who you're up against. Revenant's pick rate is pretty low, so when you are fighting one, these are not things that everyone is going to be thinking about, so you really got to be aware of who you are fighting. Moving on to Crypto, it's pretty simple. Just destroy the drone, and he's literally just a dude in the Outlands. If you are looking for a little more though, you can drop your armor on the ground prior to Crypto's EMP going off. It's been a while since this stops the armor from taking damage though so take note the armor is still going to take damage and it won't be full when you pick that armor back up the big benefit of this though is that you won't be showing the enemies that it took damage which can give false impressions that you are a little bit healthier than you actually are and additionally crypto won't be leveling up his evo shield since the player did not take any damage i find that a lot of players frankly just do not know about this little tip sadly there's really not a lot to say when it comes to countering watson the brainless strategy is to of course shoot her nodes that being said the main counter is probably the most powerful part of her kit and it's simply just to destroy the ultimate pylon and get that thing out of commission. Be sure to destroy the pylon as it is placed as I find players really just do not understand that it's freely recharging the entire team shields or stopping the grenade usage. If you can take out that ultimate pylon quickly and then follow up with a grenade it's going to be a pretty big deal and it's a great way to open up for a cleanup and really catch that Watson off guard. If you think Caustic's name needs to be renamed to Gas Daddy, hit that like button, or if you know, you just want to support me. That being said, another brutally difficult legend to counter is going to be the first big guy on our list. Caustic's gas is literal nightmare fuel to play against, especially if the enemy Caustic knows what they're doing. A good Caustic can slow things down tremendously and really make players feel very impatient and get reckless up against that gas. Do not overextend when playing against the Caustic, and the biggest recommendation is to slow it down, be methodical, and take out those gas traps as fast as you can. To back this up, keep separation from you and the enemy caustic as it's a really good thing to do just to keep those gas traps away from you or that gas grenade from coming into your area slow it down be methodical about your positioning and have some patience when you are playing against the gas daddy another big way to counter every legend in apex is of course join the community discord what are you waiting for don't play with those randoms that quit on you after running across the map to die hop in party with others or chat with myself and the community bangalore in today's meta is actually not that hard to counter since scanning is so prevalent but there's a few things that you can do to better prepare and defend 
defense herself against a bang. Finding a way to negate her smoke is really what it's all about because that is her premier ability. I actually love having a digital threat optic because this is the easiest way to go, but this is not always going to be a guarantee as you're not always going to find one. I actually love to have a DT on my secondary SMG or shotgun specifically, but beyond this, it's pretty simple. Just stay out of the smoke and never walk into a Bangalore smoke unless you know you are for sure going to come out on top. When in doubt and when possible, just keep your distance and don't overextend out of your territory into her smoke because this is what she wants. The legend with nine lives who just keeps coming back for more is going to be Wraith. Countering Wraith is actually a breeze, but it can be troublesome depending on your positioning and location. Simply just chasing Wraith who is activating and then in her tactical queue is the way to go. You can fairly easily keep up with her when she is in this phase and she will be the most vulnerable right as she's coming out of her tactical. The reason positioning matters is because you do not want to extend yourself into open areas or towards that Wraith's team where you are just going to get beat down. Be very mindful if you are chasing Wraith and don't be afraid to just let her go if it's going to cost you your positioning and your life. A bonus tip is to of course just not aim down sights at any Wraith so you don't activate her passive ability. Another legend who is pretty difficult to counter is going to be Pathfinder. The grapple has one of the highest skill ceilings in the game and his ability to make up massive ground and take height nearly instantly is a tough thing to counter. Countering this is really where you're going to want to focus your attention and this is specifically the case against good Pathfinder players. The big thing is that Pathfinder is more or less in motion without the ability to really cancel that movement once he does use the grapple which does mean that his arc or flight is a predetermined pattern even if it is very atypical and not linear and if it is aggressive and fast. Pathfinder will be the weakest at the apex of his grapple's height or right as he is done grappling. Countering and engaging a Pathfinder when you know his grapple is on cooldown is the best way to plan a fight. Try to force Pathfinder to use his grapple prematurely so you then can counter and take him out. Moving on to our resident healer, we do have Lifeline and there's really not a whole lot with her. Shooting players that are being revived is the easiest way to counter her premier ability. Beyond this, being mindful of a Lifeline that is also using her healing drone is more or less giving her and the team double the amount of healing. The drone is pretty noticeable both visually and audibly, so take care and be on the lookout for this. One of the most formidable legends in Apex is Gibraltar, and this also means countering a Gibraltar is very difficult. His combo of the Fortified and Gun Shield makes him a very tough legend to go up against, and his Dome Shield is probably one of the strongest abilities in Apex, at least as of the posting of this video. Unless you are a very experienced player and more used to dome fighting, I usually find the best way to counter a Gibraltar, and more specifically players who main Gibraltar, is to just stay out of the dome until it does go away. And this is especially the case if you are not rocking a shotgun or a wingman, using an SM or a rifle during a Gibby fight is a very difficult thing to do because a Gibby can bait you to wasting your shots while all a shotgun using Gibraltar has to do is quick pop in and out to get a shot on target. Definitely take care when going into a Gibby bubble is one of the main reasons why I think shotguns are very valuable in upper tier ranked. Another counter to the dome shield can always be to get an arc star inside the dome. This is a great way to keep enemies out of that dome while you do pick them apart. The legend that has one of the best ways to track you in a fight is going to be Bloodhound and because their scan is so killer, simply just waiting for the scan to wear off off is the way to go. Moving around a corner or out of a door while the hound has actively scanned you is pretty much a death sentence and it's the worst thing you can do. They have a complete line of sight on you while you can't see them giving them the complete advantage. You can actually counter Bloodhound even further by baiting your movement and giving them false impressions of what you're going to do. While you're actively scanned, move in the opposite direction that you would typically go and as soon as that scan wears off, you can then maneuver in a different way and thus confusing them even further. The big thing with Bloodhound is just to be mindful of your movements and don't peak when you are scanned. Season 13's Newcastle does not have a ton of ways to counter him at the moment, but if you want a great way to make quick work of his castle wall, all you gotta do is just punch the barriers twice to break the sections of the ultimate ability. This is much faster than shooting it, although it will require you to be much closer to the wall in order to actually counter it. A bonus tip is also just team shot Newcastle's tactical wall, as it really does not have that much health, and you can make quick work of this to leave Newcastle and his squad exposed. Much like Valkyrie, Octane is another legend you will more than likely encounter counter multiple times in a single game due to his very high pick rate. Octane's launch pad is pretty easy to counter as the movement is very linear. Octane's second jump on the launch pad is the moment when you need to unload and fire on enemies that are hitting the pad. At this moment, they have no way to redirect their movement and it's when you can pretty easily counter them. This is also when they are moving the slowest on the pad. The big thing is to not waste too many shots right as Octane is hitting the pad because that is when Octane is moving the fastest and it's going to be the hardest to hit. Take your game one step further. Check out my 20 bomb and 4k damage badge guide. Happy gaming legends.